setting of Nottingham. Both these teams do have some zones that they can pull out, but talking to the captains beforehand, they're thinking it's probably not going to be the weather for it. It's going to be about staying close. We know Oxford like to go for those run-through Ds. They like to put a lot of pressure on, and then this is a rebuilding in a lot of ways, Glasgow side, but it's a rebuilding from the ground up, talking to the two captains, one of whom you saw there being a big part of the offense, Elizabeth Dimitrova. You can expect to see a lot of her on the receiving end of the disc throughout this game. They're saying we're going to try and keep it to the basics, keep it nice and simple, and uh, slowly work through our players, work through our systems, and establish those structures for the years and games to come. A little bit of beef between these two sides from what happened in uh, 2021. Just tell us uh, about that and the history these two teams have. Well, it's something we will hopefully see. as we get back to the action. Max Maximire. Quick pass forward, Canada. Looking for a reset around, forced to go backwards and loses a few yards in the process. Big fake, lots of space between the handlers and the cutters coming out of that deep space. Now is Canada again, Maximire. Forward pass floating long towards the back of the end zone, just didn't quite have the legs to get it, and eventually it's Chung on the knees, but no disc. So something that Glasgow want to do is focus on team defense. Where there's an opportunity to poach, they're going to try and go for it, certainly in the early exchanges until Oxford wise up. So you can see there Oxford doing a lot of open side under. And right at the end, it was Elise Camille Brennan, Camilleri Brennan who stepped into the space and forced that more difficult around pass. We'll see if that keeps working for them or how Oxford can react. And an immediate turnover, there's going to be a call. That is the other captain for Glasgow and a matchup of jersey numbers as well. He's going up against Sclear Davies. Just a little bit of conversation. A bit of, an, a bit of a floaty up the line, Tom. And in those situations, if the guy gets up and above you, violates that verticality, that space immediately above your head, it is technically a foul. At the same time, you know, you feel things in your gut sometimes. Certainly do. Certainly do. Oh, and our first opportunity for a tram cam <laughs> of the day. It's a highlight of the, the venue here at Highfields. There's University Sports Ground at the University of Nottingham um, and a contested foul call on the sideline. It goes back into the hands of uh, Nicholas Byrne. Byrne? I would say Byrne, but again, Byrne. I would be going with an Irish pronunciation over a Scottish one. Byrne gets it moving across the field. Uh, Le Kratz. Dukin gets it back across. Dimitrov. High disc. Now Glasgow is starting to make some progress upfield, but Matsumaya spots the opportunity to get a block, gets the fingertips through, and the disc is onto the floor and into the hands of Oxford. They need to hold here get their game underway that's a nice bit of movement just uh, drops the shoulder accelerates away leaves uh, Duke and wondering where the, the mark had gone and uh, easy up the line pass in the end making it look easy on the final exchange but they had to work hard to get that disc back some clamp down defense you can expect to see Hayato Kaneda collect discs all game long in the end zone he's one of the bigger receivers for this Oxford side talking to the captains beforehand they're saying yeah major major strategy for us is just jacking it deep to Kaneda and that time shorter field but again he just shows how easily he gets free he creates that space and attacks it so Oxford getting two short field turns one of them was called back but showing their defensive pressure and that was a uh, hold so two holds to start one a bit cleaner than the other something that's interesting i think about this glasgow side they are this first year captaincy for beth and for Mihal, that's a zero and two. They've done quite a good job. Like I said at the start, they're trying to build themselves up. They don't have an O and D line. So don't be mistaken for thinking. Turn by the O line. That was a turn by 
the team. The team. By the gym line is what they call it, the gym and oh, back okay. lines. So J and B as opposed to O and D. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops going on. Jim and Beth. Jim and Beth. So this would be the Beth line, as you can see, because Elizabeth Dimitrov is out there. That's number two in the cutting position on the near side line. And who's Jim then? Because well, Mikhail is Mikhail, not... I think it's a nickname it's for a him. It's a nickname, okay, right. We're all uh, starting to work out how this, uh, <laughs> how this team works. Um, welcome to Nottingham. Disc makes its way forward. Great cut up the line, continuing Raturi showing a quick turn of pace. Gets it to Dawson, Dawson dishes back, Raturi again. No, it's gonna come back. So after quite a clean structure with the split stack to work it down the field, you can see they've almost gone into an accidental horizontal stack on the end zone line. So still some things to sharpen up for this Glasgow side. Raturi. And a big hammer into the end zone, denied. Uh, Tobizovic reaches up. He's uh, not got the stature for those big takedowns, but he got position on that disc all the way from the hands. You see, overshooting the intended receiver. I think they're aiming for John Dawson, but brilliant step through by Tobizovic to get this steal. Oxford with a big floaty disc, plenty of time to read this when it's just misread. The target there uh, was Needick, Luke Needick, but he couldn't quite get the hand up and uh, was probably just caught off guard by that wind, the disc bobbling in the air. Not much of a breeze this morning, Lorcan. No, but it's one of those speculative ones. It just comes in every now and again just to make a couple of estimations and throw everybody's assumptions off. So Glasgow forced back, and they have got a bit of work to do to gain the yards. Sabizovic taking away that first pass. Oh, and he's, his flick to the end zone was not ideal. Leading edge down into the turf. They'd be disappointed having got the block in a good position. Not to throw the scoring pass in from there was uh, he's let himself down. It's hard to turn down that adrenaline, I guess. I mean, he's clearly heads up, great defense. You can already see the way he's poaching off Dawson in the middle of the pitch. That's a defender who is looking to make a nuisance of themselves. Successful twice. Just maybe needs to go with the dump rather than the ego shot after getting the block. Good cut from the deep space by Pollock into a good position, but uh, not taken. They're using Rant Raturi a lot here. Spreading the play across to Grimmer. Grimmer back to Raturi. Option was at the line. Now the big figure of Dawson comes back, but it keeps moving it forward. Raturi again. Floating it into the end zone, but there was nobody there from uh, the blue shirts, and it disappears into the turf once more. A difficult one right in front of the end zone, but again, it just keeps coming back to this idea. Glasgow are here to work on their structure. They somewhat surprised to come second in the Northern region, so they got to tighten some things up. Let's see how tight they can be on defense. Good couple of initiating passes from Oxford. Quick backhand, finds a bit of space. Now to Bizevich. Made it to halfway. Nice reset pass across the field to Hatzor. To Bizevic with a much better shot to the end zone. Is it going to be inside the back line? Oh, perfectly read. All the way into the hands. No mistake this time. Is that the 22 shirt of Rachel Hawes with a break for Oxford. They lead this one 2-1. Really impressive stuff, and clearly that's what Tobizovic was going for the first time he tried to open up that flick. No fear, no hesitation, goes right back to it. That's the matter of an execution error instead of just not being quite capable. So I'm going to have to eat some of those words I was saying in the middle. Maybe he needs to lean into that adrenaline and open up a few more of those. Well, the, we're chatting um, before the game with Harry Mason, who said, you know, watch out for Tobizovic. He's... Uh, one of the form players played with deep space last year 
Uh, they played with Reading before that. Definitely uh, one to watch. Travelling, travelling merchant in the mixed division. Yeah. Just delegated the stats for you there, Lorcan. I appreciate that quite a lot. It's always good to have the helpers, and uh, we're joined in the booth by the next generation of ultimate commentators, or as uh, ultimate players first. Ultimate off, players first of all. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to just jump straight to the commentary. You got to wait until you're over the hill to do that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, it's a self burn. Those are rare. Self burn. <laughs> yeah. So two one, uh, Oxford versus Glasgow. Oxford up two one uh, here, and the mixed division of UK nationals with myself, Tom Styles, and Lorcan Murray. Woo! After a busy, busy year of ultimate, haven't we just? And you were leading the commentary line um, over at the Masters tournament in Limerick. Uh, I was over in Cincinnati, and then in. Madrid for World Games. Um, we've had the Junior Tournament over in Poland, which was uh, European under-17s and World under-20s. A real um, just fiesta of frisbee. Every week there was uh, more ultimate to watch, and it's been great. Great grab. Glasgow making good work here, slicing its way down the field. Oh, perfectly passed into the hands of Rachel Pollock, who runs free and collects the disc. But it was a, a good shot deep from uh, Nicholas Byrne in the middle of the field, opened up the arm and found the gap. I tell you, Oxford might have the doctorates, but that was academic by Glasgow. They worked their way down the pitch, kept creating the space, attacking it brilliantly, one cut at a time. The closest or the shakiest they looked at any point was when Captain Beth had to really reach out and snag a disc with two hands, but really great work creating space and then having someone else attack it, which is one of the most important things in fundamental structure and something you need to lock down before you can start to realize the ambitions that lie in the years waiting for Glasgow. So very encouraging and exactly the kind of response you want after giving up a break early in a game. Yeah. So speaking of academic, Oxford have the unique distinction of being able to put out an entire line of doctorates. Really? They have seven people with PhDs as well as two people currently studying. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is a fact that goes nowhere, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's um, good for them. Well, we'll see how educated they could be. It shows that they should have some critical analysis capabilities. Can they respond? Can they match up to Glasgow? Are they just going to keep shooting it deep to Canada? They are. Uh, that's what they've done so far. Canada has met his match in the end zone, though. Big grab from uh, Lacritz, Kevin Lacritz in the 34 shirt, taking care of business in the end zone. And Glasgow with an opportunity to break back here. It's two all. And on the far sideline, uh, Camilleri Brennan. Brings it in, a flick to space, brought down by Lacretz. Again, the shot goes up, but it's read perfectly by Howjago. Yeah, Anthony Howjago collecting, and Oxford have it back. Howjago on the far side. We've had several pronunciation lessons with his name over the years. How'd you go? I'm doing all right. How are you? Yeah. Big shot into space. It's going to require some running down, but doesn't quite have the legs. So interestingly enough, I was warned that there might be... We know Oxford like to shoot deep. It's a big target that they have. Normally they like to try to get it to Canada, or if Canada isn't quite available, Jonathan Hawes is another favorite target of theirs, number 27. That's not who I expected to see shooting it out the back of the end zone. I think Nedic is someone who's more famous for that, but just showing off, uh, showing off their range to the extremes. Who was it that threw that big? I think it was uh, Canada. It was Canada that threw the uh, out, out, of, uh, out the back of the end zone. Yeah, sure give us we're working on the uh, more threadbare LTTV setup right now as we're still trying to get a couple more 
uh, parts of the machinery online, so we don't quite have the full replay functions. We'll just have to go with our short-term memories. Risky business. We could just describe it how we saw it, Lorcan, and no one would be able to deny. Oh, hang on, they've got, they're on YouTube. They could, <laughs> they could just rewind and watch it again. Oh, that looked uh, very close. But the fine margin closed down by Oxford. And they have the disc midfield. Gets it forward. And Gu. Canada. Flick into the space, but the space closed. It wasn't a good shot into the end zone eventually. And Oxford gifting the disc back to Glasgow on a few occasions here. Big pressure on the defence, forces Glasgow around the back. Full width of the fit, uh, field, Dukan. Back to burn, Dukan available, but the uh, looking for a few more yards on that far sideline. Glasgow out of ideas, and the ideas they do have are pretty well marked. Big gain of yards, but dealt with brilliantly. The Oxford defence in these deep spaces seem to be um, really taking away the, everything that uh, Glasgow are looking for. Good movement from the female handlers for Oxford. And Goop. Canada calling forward to how'd you go? Floaty into the end zone, a big bid required. Just the execution in the red zone from Oxford has been well off in this point. They just haven't managed to put it in, Lorcan. Well off is a good way of describing it. Like Shona Carr is a brilliant, brilliant athlete and getting fully horizontal, still not really coming close. The shot from Canada slightly earlier was well behind the intended receiver. Their clampdown defense has been fantastic. You can see Glasgow as they call the timeout. Lots to be encouraged by. You can see how much they want to stick to their structure. They're trying to work the horizontal. They're trying to keep creating one base on one side and attacking it. But I think you just hit the nail on the head, Tom. The defensive pressure by Oxford has been something else. You can see what Glasgow are going for. They're staying true to it, which is good. You want to try and build that up and get the system in place. But what do you do when that just doesn't work when you're under so much pressure? going to try and take some like some more panic shots deep when your players are going up against the likes of Kanat. Kanat's one of the fastest players we probably have here this weekend and she's going to tear those down every time if they're not pinpoint accurate so in this circle right now Glasgow what you say is like the system's good it's just we're not good enough to make it work right now against this pressure would you think they should go more unorthodox or they should just keep trying and hope that the pressure turns them into some diamonds? Well, they, what they're doing, at the, the, it seems like at the moment, is using three handlers in the back and then trying to find a forward pass and they're just not finding any forward passes. So what, whatever system, whatever structure they've got set up, they need to adapt because Oxford have got their number at the moment. The deep shots are being well marked out, so they, they can't use that as a bailout when the stall count gets high. Um, it's it's not just down to individual errors, they just Oxford have, Oxford can manage playing against Glasgow if Glasgow are going to play like this. So they, they need something fundamentally different. We'll see what they come out with after this timeout. It's a good chance to, uh, you know, settle and work out what to do. Well, if not individual errors, what about individual brilliance? Someone taking it on themselves to go for a hammer over the top or try to get a bit of following the throw after you get it. They were able to get the odd bit of the up the line, but the timing on the follow cuts wasn't quite as clean as it's been. And when we saw, say, on the previous flawless offensive hold they had, that fluidity was right there. Handlers were up rushing, getting the disc, and then shooting to open spaces. I think right now they can't take that first step. We've seen once they get that first step down, the second, third, and fourth come quite quickly. So. I think stick to the structure would be what I'd say and just do it harder. If it's still not working another point from now, start to look to mix things up. But when you're as young as they are, when you're in the rebuilding stage that they're in, you don't want to move away from the fundamentals too soon because then you'll just wind up last. 
So we're coming back in here in a very dangerous position. Like you said, they've got the three handlers back. They've got the four people in the middle. What I would expect to see them go for is Gemma Milne just clear out exactly like that. And there's the uprushing handler. So we'll see if they can get a bit more speed into it. Created a lot of space down that sideline, but there was no one filling it. Now Glasgow find themselves a long way from the disc. And uh, that cross-field option wasn't really there. Bit of confusion sliding on the back. Was the in? He's not been called out, or has he? On into the end zone. The shot forward was targeted at Milne, and it's turned over. And whatever foul call you expect is going to be retracted. No? I believe it's uh, an out-of-bounds call on Byrne. Was he in when he landed on the sideline? He was called out of bounds by a couple of people. They're going to the sideline as well. Personally, I, and you can I, I, rewind it. I think he was I in. I thought he was in. I thought, I he, thought was he was in. in. So, he was on his back. Exactly, had the disc lifted up. It was like the nice slide, keeps yeah. it close. It looks like it's going to go back, which is a little bit of a let off. A lovely leading pass, but maybe Milne was distracted by the stoppage in play. It's one of those things when you are in the end zone with, with no one marking you and the disc is coming straight in and all you've got to do is catch it. Sometimes that's the hardest thing. Where if there's a bit of pressure and a bit of competition, you, you know you've got to focus. It's when there's nothing to distract you, nothing. everything can. Yes. And she was right on the line as well. Maybe that was a factor um, in thinking, you know, should I be in or not here? But again, a real mix-up from the Glasgow. No you know, obvious options coming from that first pass. Burn again. Looking off in the first uh, couple of steps. Eventually gets it going. And over to the far side. Harkey into the end zone. Burns available again. Tries to catch it on his back. Doesn't come up with the disc this time. He's trying to put the whole team on his back right now and leading as well as he can. Perhaps maybe a bit too much pressure, too much to take all on yourself in that one situation. It seems like there is a slight hesitation with this Glasgow offense. Yeah. And by the time they're comfortable enough to make the throw, the gap's been closed by the defense on Oxford. So let's see how Oxford can respond. We just saw a you know, burn from the center of the field, looking at a female handler uh, cutting into a free space. And it was three, four, five, and then the disc went, well, it should have gone on three. You know, it should have been as soon as that cut's available because you've got to keep the other team moving. And um, yeah, take, take your options while they're there because Oxford are going to take them away unless you do. But uh, Oxford haven't been clean themselves. How do you go? Gets it going for them now. Holden on the far sideline. Carr. Canada. Gets it back to how do you go? Canada bustling around. A big floaty disc across the top. Burn poaching off the man. Uh, Skylar Davis pops it into the end zone. And uh, Canada's there with the goal. And a second break of the game for Oxford. He certainly was gonzo from the attentions of Byrne to get that free in front of the end zone line and then some nice follow through cutting. It's tough out there right now for Glasgow and it just seems like things are coming off for Oxford and they're taking great advantage of what looked like quite a tired Glasgow line after a few turns on that point. Ultimately to get the break when there's that many turnovers is, you know, there's a little bit of luck involved in that. So Oxford, I honestly am a little bit surprised to see them take this lead, but maybe the ghosts of that knockout game from last year coming back to haunt them. That's right. So it wasn't, it wasn't a break. It was eventually a hold. It was the four turnovers that fooled me, Lorcan. Four turnovers for both teams. Uh, and that is why I 
thought it was a break. So it was a little, a little scrappy it coming scrappy. into this, which, uh, again, I am somewhat surprised by. Not so much from Oxford, who are 3-2 up now after getting that hold. Oxford warmed up. We're getting ready. First game in Nationals. You understand there's going to be a little bit of nerves. Edinburgh had a warm-up game. A warm-up game against Nemesis that they rather comfortably won 15-4. So you'd think they'd come in here a little bit sharper, but that defensive pressure that Oxford have been able to put on them, I think it's just knocked them off their rhythm. Oh, that's a poor disc, and it's been taken care of quickly by uh, Hamilton. Gets it down to the ground and walking up to take the disc. Tobizovic cuts forward, quick pop in, it's an easy point, and that is a break for Oxford. 4-2, they have this game now. Another short field turnover by Glasgow. We saw them getting it after the turns on Oxford. Now they're getting them on their own offensive points as well. That's the worst kind. Was that Tobizovic with the assist there? I believe that was Tobizovic throwing it to Jonathan Hawes for the score. Oxford keeping some of those players out here. They've got to be feeling themselves right now. It was a great chase by Anthony Haujigo. He was chasing it all the way down that pitch, slightly too floaty. And you know, if you don't put that kind of effort in early, then the handler's got time to catch it and you just got to sit there cursing your breath. But he was all the way under that, causing problems. So things looking very good for Oxford right now. Very similar looking line back out on the field for Oxford. Tobizovic sends the big put up the field. Glasgow gets it to Dawson. Dawson gets it back, sends it back. The familiar figure of Raturi running the offense. Dawson just floats across the uh, figure of Dawson to uh, get the disc over Dawson's head is quite an achievement. <laughs> an unfortunate one, yeah, that one goes in the Hall of Shame. Is this Glasgow errors or Oxford pressure? Uh, I think it's probably a, a mix of both. It's an Ouroboros. Needick. Gets it back around. Good reset to Hawes. Hawes all the way across the field to Katie Tidd. Tidd gives a low disc, but it's collected off the turf. Almost a 1-6 structure from Oxford right now. Yeah, very vertical. Creating a lot of space, but uh, having to work with the legs to get free on every cut. Creates space at the back of the end zone. Beautifully worked, Tobizovic with the raking backhand across the sky, finding the uh, space on the far side of the field. And another break, that is 5-2. Brilliant work by Oxford. I have to believe that's going to be a tactical decision by them. They recognize the way Glasgow were trying to play that team defense, looking for ways to muck it up. So by just keep taking those almost no-gainer resets, but what that kept doing was moving the defensive pressure and messing up their assignments so that eventually when it does get to, to Bajewicz on one side, they can go for that big arcing pass. Team defense clamping, so putting one person on either side of the pitch as opposed to focusing on where the disc is is something that would cancel that move out every single time and is a vital way to stopping the 1-6. But the way they keep generating this under movement, resetting the disc, moving the defensive players around, meant they could never comfortably set up that kind of a defensive structure. And they took advantage of it for another shot to open space and a trailing defender. So Oxford out there looking consummate and taking a commanding lead, 5-2. Yeah, very comfortable for them at the moment. Uh, Welcome along to Nottingham. Tom and Lorcan here with you from the UK National Championships. Um, conveniently, 25 minutes up the road from my house, which is very nice of them to uh, position it here. Uh, we have had a few issues with our uh, technology this morning, and we're trying to piece all that back together. But while we are doing that, we've got slightly reduced um, coverage with our uh, microphone here. 
hopefully that's working out well for everybody. Yeah, levels is not something we've got a lot of knowledge of right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. That's just because we're here. Oh, There's they can hear us. We shouldn't be saying that. The setup. It looks like we're going to be back up and running probably in 10 minutes or something, hopefully. Ooh. Uh, okay, right. So, yes, uh, producer Felix, um, fresh from his uh, number one camera jobs at uh, World Ultimate Club Championships in Cincinnati, where he was up the scaffolding in direct line of sight of God's lightning uh, for most of the week. Uh, and now here running the, the production for Ulti TV. Uh, the, the graphics card's been installed and uh, we've got a nod of the head. So hopefully we'll be uh, back up with the, the full coverage, replays and two cameras and different audio and you probably won't be able to hear us quite so clearly but you know, it's probably for the best. I mean, uh, when we're your primary way of consuming the sport, it's, it's clearly not been a good day for the production crew. I would like to just uh, finish the point we were making earlier on, um, slightly rushed it, about when these two teams last met in this circumstances. We had a cup last year as a way of accommodating uh, the restrictions with COVID and in that cup it took a knockout format the game to go to nationals last year came down to these two squads, Oxford against Glasgow. Oxford won, I believe, on Universe Point against Glasgow. Heartbreaking for them. An interesting tidbit with that is the fact that, and this is something the Scottish pointed out to me, England was able to come back and start training a month earlier. Because of restrictions in Scotland, they weren't able to have team trainings this soon. So, what's their excuse this year? You can't blame Queen Nicola, can you? Oh, double tram cam here. We're getting the full, the full Nottingham experience. We're going to maximise the opportunity. Uh, this this tram runs from the city centre past the university hospital, past the university, and all the way to Beeston. And if you want to, you can go to Bardills uh, Garden Centre in Chilwell. Here you are for a bit of local tram knowledge. I feel like I'm becoming more knowledgeable in Nottingham every second. Oh, another run through D. Another block. And I'm, I'm assuming that, is that Helen Brooks in the 50 shirt? Or has she got a different number on her shorts? No, she's got a different number on her shorts. But uh, she's not on our roster, is why we're not calling her name, unfortunately. She's getting great plays all over the field, but we don't have a, a 50 on Oxford roster. Big high disc coming over the top. We'll see. We'll see if we can ID the player um, manually. Big shot downfield, and it's a, a turn. I loved the jab cut fake by Mubios, this didn't quite float enough, but when you're going deep and then you look over your shoulder as if to fake, oh no, I'm gonna have to come under. Quick jab step, planted her defender, got a little bit of extra separation, but the disc was just falling too fast for her to go and collect it. Luka Niedic gets Oxford going, swings across the far side, gets it uh, into the hands of Serena Danilak. Back from injury. Big shot downfield. Plenty of space to, and time to bring it down under control. James Hamilton with the goal for Oxford. And that is three breaks in a row. And they lead this one 6-2. Things are not looking good for the Scots right now. But... We'll see if they can come back. You mentioned Serena Denalik, who's been coming back from injury. She injured her shoulder, her right shoulder, earlier in the season, and has basically spent the second half of the season trying to learn how to play with her left hand. So if you're trying to do a bit of scouting, maybe you're going to be playing Oxford later on, she basically only has a lefty backhand. But that's incredibly impressive when you consider she had half a season to learn how to do it. I think that's the, the story of anyone who's ambidextrous in the sport of ultimate 
Um, they, they did it while they were had their other hand broken or wrist or shoulder or some, some sort of injury prevented them throwing with their dominant hand and they suddenly became amb ambidextrous through no choice whatsoever. Apart from Qu uh, Quentin Roger, he's ambidextrous, he plays with both, throws with both hands. I think yeah, he's just a freak. Yeah, I've met a couple of those mutants, and more power to him, but it, it's not fair. It's, it's basically cheating. It's like trying to play memory games with someone with a photographic memory. What are you, you're just born and you can remember everything you've seen? That's not fair. You're just born, you can use both hands equally. I have dyspraxia, so I basically have two left feet for hands. So it's, uh, it's a little annoying in that regard, so I'm quite jealous. It's like inverted ambidextrous. <laughs> <laughs> I did see, and I'd love to get your take on this, Tom Styles, while we wait for the game to restart. I placed 2011 as the genesis of the left-hand backhand. 2011, all of a sudden, everybody started learning off-hand backhands, and then three years later, they're just a mandatory throw. Uh, what you, for the dump? Dump, slight leading pass against the zone, showing off because somebody you like has shown up to the pitches to watch. All these reasons. All, all those reasons, yes. No, I, I think, um, yeah, it wasn't a... a a, a big play that we were calling um, Worlds in 20, 20, 2008. We didn't see very many lefty backhands. 2016, they were everywhere. Everywhere. Showed, someone else who is everywhere right now, Shona Carr. She's been doing a fantastic job. She was given all kinds of trouble to Leah Harkey earlier on, and now she seems to be passing that problem onto the form of Camilleri Brennan. Tobizovic gets it to the centre of the field. Big shot downfield from um, Jonathan Hawes is picked off. And again, Oxford are doing such a good job of just staying shoulder tight to Glasgow. Forster. Get it upfield to Hodge. Hodge sends it. Defense there. Second time of asking. Glasgow had a chance. I couldn't see anything wrong with the play. Now, there's, it's a, there may have been uh, words, but it's all been retracted. Once again, that first D going to car. Such a presence. Brave to take a deep shot on if she's anywhere in the vicinity, but I suppose you have to when you're not getting much more separation anywhere else. Setting off at pace, getting that break across, big gainer, a oh, well picked off. That wasn't an easy uh, catch as you're running upfield. Holden grabs and a sensible reset back around the back of the field. Gaining pass into the hands of Hamilton. Sends it, it's going to be out the back and attempted greatest by Tobizovic. <laughs> Optimistic at the very least. Well, what else do you need when you're coming up to Nottingham? There's a bit of optimism, a bit of ambition to try and get into the latter stages of this tournament. Oxford showing a skill and a presence that, honestly, I, I don't think too many people expected from them coming into this tournament. And they've put so much pressure on, and they will continue to do so. Especially when I would just, honestly, I would just move Carr and whoever she's marking out of the open panel. Floated across, but yeah, great positioning. Um, so the 50 shirt is that car. That's shown it. I, I think, think that's Rachel, Rachel Hawes. Hawes. Rachel Hawes is having a great game out there. She's wearing a 50 shirt, but I think she's got 22 on her shorts. And as we mentioned her name, run through block. Just another statistic, she's been handling wonderfully as part of the Oxford line, but she's been a, such a good defensive pressure as well. Uh, 50, 50, uh, 22, Rachel Hawes. The disc gets given back uh, to Glasgow. You almost feel at this point that Oxford are just taking every opportunity they can, even maybe when it's not necessarily on, and their execution not quite got that clinical nature. They'll get away with it here, 
but will they get away with anywhere else? Again, Hawes steps through, takes away the option, gives it back to Tobizovic, floats it forward. It's easily worked, and every single one of the Oxford players was ahead of their mark, was uh, sprinting forward, and they've, they've just got that extra buzz of energy around them, and the body language from Glasgow um, is not here. You're exactly right. We've spoken about it a few times earlier on in this game that the clinicism hasn't been there for Oxford outside the end zone. Lots of turnovers, but I just think they're in Glasgow's heads. They've certainly done something to them because they've got this confidence to get the disc back. Short field turns over and over again. We saw a lot on the left-hand side of the pitch. We're seeing them on the right-hand side of the pitch now as well. It's just going to show you it's temperate at worst. It is very calm out here, apart from, I imagine, in the heads and hearts of Glasgow. Glasgow, who are right now watching their national ambitions, go something down the toilet. A formative moment for them as they're going to take another break. Hopefully recuperate. And we will take a slight break here ourselves and be back to you in 30 short seconds. Welcome back to Nottingham, the mixed division nationals We're in pool play at the moment with Glasgow in the blue, Oxford in the white, and it's Oxford in charge with a 7-2 lead. Big shot downfield, running it down, perfectly weighted, it wasn't quite nearly there. Elizabeth Dimitrova chasing it down all the way. The shot deep was from uh, Raturi. Did everything she could to get down there, Lorcan. Raturi's been fantastic on the offensive end. If anything, I've wanted him to take on a bit more responsibility as this game has developed. And we've spoken about how crucial Dimitrova is to the positive successes of this Glasgow side. Millimeters, and that's exactly what they needed. So now can Oxford just really kick the last of the life out of this Glasgow side. That's a, a ropey disc, and it's been picked off, and it's uh, Raturi again. Continuing, Raturi has it back into the front corner, and it's uh, Toffolis with his second goal of the game, John Toffolis in the 18 shirt, who gets the grab, but uh, Raturi with the block and the assist, doing all the work for Glasgow. I think you got to keep Raturi on for the next, until half at the very least. I mean, I get it, you've got your two lines, but we're speaking to the captains beforehand, Jim and Beth, and they were talking about how positivity is a huge thing for Edinburgh, and it can be really difficult to manufacture positivity when you're down. I mean, you just need some people who can either lift you on the pitch or the people who can artificially inflate you from the sideline. Now, I used to be one of the latter, you know, just big, loud, running, jumping, screaming, anything to get people to smile, even if it's the thought, man, that guy's an idiot. But that's the kind of thing they need right now. The other side of it is what Raturi is giving them, which is on the pitch leadership. Did his head drop? Absolutely not. The only thing that dropped was his nose as he went full speed down the line chasing those points. 
getting those catches and flowing it through. It's been fantastic stuff from him. If they want to fight back into this game, that's exactly the kind of motivation, exactly the kind of spirit they need. So I would start mixing up the lines now. Just who wants it the most, that's the seven that are going on. We'll worry about structure and fundamentals later. This is character test time. Yeah, three, seven is the deficit. That's their first goal since they were two each. And they looked like they were in the game at that point, but they've looked out of it since. In every sense of the word, out of it as well. Mentally, physically, short field turnovers, overthrows, and then no one sprinting back to the line. I mean, it's the trifecta of I've given up. And it's that's why you need to lean on some of these other veteran established presences, or at least the more spirited ones, to try and carry you through. So we'll see how Glasgow can respond now. I honestly expect Oxford to put this one in pretty clean. Yeah, it's the first time the uh, Oxford O-line have been out here for a while. In fact, it's, it's uh, players that we've not mentioned in a, a while. Canada and uh, How'd You Go. Matt Samirs are there. There's Canada with the disc now. How'd You Go busting forward. And it's a different defensive look from uh, Glasgow as well. They've thrown a zone, sprinting across to take away the options. Uh, Gregor Foster, Forster just trying to do what he could and they've swapped into a one-on-one -on -one. but leaving Canada that close to the end zone and unmarked is not wise. Now there's a mark, gets in the disc back across. This is clinical so far from Oxford, how'd you go? No cuts for him to look at. Going to have to get something from the handler space. Doesn't take it. Looks for that inside shot. Canada just drifting away. Frustration from Glasgow. Great play from Oxford. Really great stuff from Oxford. I like that look defensively from Glasgow. Let's throw out a zone. Let's see if we can make them a little more uncomfortable. Oxford showing their experience, showing the team depth that they have. I mean, they've only been a club, I think, for three years. But a lot of them bring a lot of experience from outside of the area to the team on full display there. Like I said, I expect them to get the clean hold. That O-line came out, worked it, found the spots. Canada was huge in just finding gaps in the offense, initially against the zone, working really well with how'd you go and just keeping those quick passes going. And then once they switched to the match defense, couple of cuts, pull apart the space, and then just a beautiful flick break from, uh, from how'd you go into Canada for the score and a commanding 8-3 lead at half. Yeah, strong work from uh, Oxford. Myself, Tom Styles, alongside Lorcan Murray from UK Nationals. And we'll be back with more from Nottingham in just a moment. I didn't see this one at all. No? I don't think Oxford did either. Talk to them beforehand. They say they're very boring. I mean, I guess they are. But like doing the biz. Doing the biz. Doing the biz. Yeah. What you got?
get the let's get the switch over that. Right. Back on it. Lock in. Lock in. Uh, welcome back to the second half action here. It's Glasgow Paul to get things going. Oh, just nearly got the first point block. That would have been the perfect second half. How'd you go? Moves it downfield. Gets it into the hands of Ngu. Back to Keown. Keown finds a forward pass that works nicely to Holden. Slightly different look from the Oxford offensive line here. We're in Nottingham for UKU Nationals in the mixed division. And something of a, a surprise position for Oxford. Uh, certainly, Lorcan, your feeling was that Oxford weren't expecting to, to have an easy ride in this game. It's certainly not this easy of a ride as we see the shot to the end zone. I think something I expected to be a much bigger factor was the team defense that Glasgow are so fond of, that they used to such great effect in their regional campaign. Oxford done. They, Oxford are quite fundamental with their approach, and while that can be reliable in a lot of situations, it's also something that a smart and kind of crafty team can really take advantage of. So to see them be able to get so much offensive cleanliness against this pressure is uh, quite impressive. Another high stall count um, shot upfield. It was Pollock that caught it. Two players clashing. Uh, Hannah Millard involved. It's been uh, uncontested, so Millard will keep the disc for Glasgow. And Glasgow has shown these sparks of momentary brilliance. They've shown these flashes of legitimacy and it's just been a difficult thing as we see really great box out defense cleaned up on the other end yeah cleaning up the garbage there and he's calling a foul i didn't see a foul there i saw and uh how'd you go trying to get box out the position and doing a really good job at it the uh, Glasgow player ran into the back as it's turned out it's academic because it's finished in Glasgow hands I don't see the point of a foul call here I agree completely on that point perhaps you know it's difficult when you come from one direction and you try to turn change direction and then be all like you ran into me he goes well you ran into my path and then stayed there so understandably you gotta just let that go it went into the hands of the other captain Dimitrova so something worth noticing Glasgow are mixing up their lines they're not staying rigid to the B and J lines that uh, they normally like to practice they're trying to put out a big strong force here to take the game to Oxford so they have to do something is uh, what they've been doing in the in the first half really wasn't working well if it is broke do fix it that's the idea so they've contested the foul. Well, that's I, this is what I was saying about the. Um, it's going to end up with Glasgow losing yards and position. I don't understand why. There was there was an opportunity to have that conversation, um, but to have it off the field after the point, I don't really know what Glasgow haven't gained anything. In fact, they've lost quite a lot from making that foul call. Yeah. When you're on the pitch, it always feels just a little bit different. Anyway, they'll uh, be able to watch the replay and make their own decisions, but it was always lining up for that big hammer across the field, and it's worked out beautifully. Collected by Gregor Forster, who's been a good part of this game, involved. Okay, I'm going to switch over now. Okay, so. And uh, we're going to be back in just a minute. Uh, here from Nottingham as we make a switch across to our primary uh, equipment, so we'll see you in just a second. Hello. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, myself, Tom Styles, alongside 
uh, Lorcan Murray. Oh, I can hear myself. Lorcan, can you hear me as well? Loud and clear and in control. We are back in full effect, ready to bring you a weekend of top quality UK national tournament action. Something that people keep saying with UK nationals, or haven't said with UK nationals, I should say, is that this is also a EUCR regional qualification matchup. So there are six spots, well, six spots in the open division to go to the European Championships. We'll be bringing you those games or games from that division coming up just after this. But lots to play for, not just the glory of winning the domestic title, but also going to Europe and trying to beat champions over there too. How'd you go? Involved all the way through, big cut from uh, Rachel Hawes on the sideline. Looks up Max Sumaya a little bit too free and there's been a pick call. That will go back. Hawes has been a big part of this uh, Oxford success. It looks like a real athlete out there. We're used to seeing Matt Sumaya be uh, very effective, having that extra bit of speed on the women's line always makes a big difference in the mixed division. Into the end zone, picked off cleanly bit of a uh, swilly pass into that far side law can you enjoying that I, I liked it i'm here for the pizzazz which is what i would describe that as when you go for the inside out backhand to to the wrong corner to the wrong side like how, how do you scoop it that way at a certain point you're just kind of showing off there was many other options available there such as a normal backhand down the open channel but why do that when you can arc one potentially into danger and then out of it so uh, was that to get around a force I think it was more to show off for the cameras. Okay. So uh, we'll see to an extent, but I think there was plenty of other options that would have been available if you just waited another half second. But that's the confidence that's flowing through Oxford's veins right now. I mean, that blood is pumping and those hearts. We can hear them from up here. They are in championship mode, 9-4 up on Basgo and making it look like light work at times out there. I think a big part of that is their defensive pressure that they've been able to exert over the slightly more rigid structures we've seen Glasgow put forward. So can you imagine if there was some kind of offensive fluidity or efficiency that Glasgow could try and inject in this stage of the game? Well, they've not found it so far, Lorcan. I think that a big part of that has been they've not been given the chance. You know, uh, Nationals is... Um, for a lot of these players, this would be, you know, the the biggest tournament they've they've played this year. Um, Glasgow didn't go to Worlds. Now, when Tobijevic uh, busts his way through and gets a short field opportunity for Oxford, you know, and if, if there's young players in this Glasgow side, you've talked about them building. Um, you know, sometimes the the shock of being up against a really hot defense just kind of just takes a bit of a time to get used to oh you know i can't just cut at my normal rate that gets me free when i'm playing in a normal practice it doesn't get you free at nationals because you have to work a little bit harder oxford with maybe a little bit more experience of doing that Donalek gets it back to needich flowing across and a pick has been called Jams back. Hatsaw resets. From the brick mark in Oxford, not much work to do here. Floating pass under, uh, overcut by Katie Tidd. And setting off at pace, Hannah Millard looks back over the shoulder to see nobody from Glasgow walking towards that disc. That's always a frustration, isn't it? When you, you get your head down, you think, right, I'm going to have a crack at this deep shot, and there's no one picking up the disc behind you. I now, feel betrayed. Now there's an opportunity. Good position here as a gender mismatch. That means there's space on the far side as the uh, gender mismatch is picked off. I think it was Needich that went across to cover the space and a spiraling hammer spirals out of bounds a turnover and unfortunately Glasgow seemed to be able to string five or six passes together but 
then they look tense and uh, don't have the execution. I like that look. I like that shot. I mean, you need to start getting a bit of energy in there. It was Dimitrov, the captain, who put that beautiful hammer up right before we moved on to our more professional setup a few moments ago, and I thought that could be a spark. That could be just what you need to get the offense flowing. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. At least they're out here trying some new stuff. Yes. Well, we said using the overheads might be an option to, to go to um, because what they were doing before didn't work. Tobizovic, a little bit too much heat on that disc across the field to Danalek. Finishes on the turf, pops off the fingertips. Good opportunity here for Glasgow. This would be a hold if they can put it in. That's the shot. Dawson, the target. You can see why he's the target, but he took two or three seconds to read that disc. He should have been backing off with his big strides the moment it left the fingertips. And uh, he had the space. He has the reach. Lorcan? He just didn't quite have the presence of mind, I suppose. I mean, they, it was clear they went with the three, ver or the three horizontal handlers out of the end zone. So that was a four-person stack. You have to believe, to an extent, that's a set play, something that they've been working on. You've got a lighthouse in the end zone. You want to hit it, set fire to that flame. But they just weren't able to. And I think part of it was the fact like he didn't need to turn. And he turned because it's just one of those games. They don't have that confidence. Yeah, it's not quite playing on instinct. Oh, that was a beautiful disc to create the space. Now a floating pass into the end zone, has to get on the bike. Beautifully done from Oxford. Glasgow had set up a zone, hoping to stifle, but that inside shot opens up the field and the deep disc straight down into the hands of Hamilton for his second goal of the game. Who was the assist from there, was it? Was it Canada or was it uh, How'd You Go? I think it was How'd You Go, but I couldn't say for sure right now. What I can say with, I would say, much more assurance is the confidence levels are vastly different between those two sides. While we were talking about the troubles that Glasgow are having, putting it into the end zone on that play just beforehand, both those shots are the kind of things you put up when you're feeling yourself for the Oxford side. That incisive pass that went about half the length of the pitch to create oodles of space for the lean back and just arc out a floaty dip. And that was by no means a guaranteed deep shot. I mean, you're trying to sit it to Hamilton. He's a great player, but he's given up about a foot to Dawson. And in the end, you've got to put it out in front, let it curve into him and just put just enough float so that he can chase it down, but not so much that Dawson can involve himself. That's exactly what happened. It was a truly pitch perfect throw. And I think the kind of one that only comes out of your hands when you're filled with confidence. So 10-4, good buddy. Yeah, if they feel like a poker player that's got the chip lead here. Do you know what I mean? That's they're exactly it. They're just bullying because they can. They're playing with a little bit of freedom. O Glasgow are trying these things and it's not coming off. Uh, Oxford feel like they've got the freedom to try these things and it is coming off. And then their defense has looked on a different level again. See, the defense comes down here to take away the options. You've got that front of the stack presence from... Uh, from Rachel Hawes is just taking away what would normally be an open cut for Glasgow and again she's just lurking on the shoulder they know they can't make that pass and uh, poor old Connie Hodge is just not an option for Glasgow so what I'd like to see now is are, can Glasgow get over that temptation to hesitate and just take the immediately open shots as they appear for proper gainers Milne is working incredibly hard out there, but by the time they engage with her, Denalek is caught up. Run through and uh, <laughs> almost melted into the end zone for a weirdest Callahan ever. Tobizovic uh, connects with Luke Nidic. And Nidic with the block and the goal. Double happiness for the 34 shirt for Oxford. And they are rolling. I mean, like. He macked it to himself and had time to comfortably chase it down and collect it. That's styling and profiling. And it's just the kind of thing that happens when you're 11-4 up, you're at Nationals. Just about everything is going right for them right now. If he'd macked that and then caught it in the end zone, that would have been a, a, a Callahan, wouldn't it? I think so. I mean, it's not an intentional mack. It was a run-through D. 
I was also, again, Oxford said this at the start, we're very boring, but we do rely on a lot of run-through Ds. And I thought, that's not going to work at Nationals. Run-through Ds are the kind of things you get against teams who aren't ready for you. And they've shown they've got the speed, they've got the presence and the positioning, and they're just constantly on the shoulders of Glasgow right now. Oxford maybe uh, have some legitimate ambitions of making it into the top four and seeing for a place in Europe. Well, a lot of these players have got uh, European experience. Uh, to to Bizevich, remember out in Frankfurt in 2005, playing with uh, Reading. Well, I think they won. I think they won. 2000. And 2000 did I say 2005? You I did. Meant, I meant 2015. That makes much more that sense. Was a decade later. Yep. I don't think Reading were around in 2005. It was. They were still the Diskits then. <laughs> We're about to get a history lesson <laughs> yeah. in uh, the old club names of yeah. UK Ultimate. 2005, is that the year Clapham started? No. They were well well before that. Two, that 2000? Yeah. Uh, yes. Or 2001. Somebody will be in the comments at me for that. Not knowing. Raturi. I wish just once Glasgow would play Raturi and Byrne on the same point. Well, Byrne looked really good at the start of the game, but um, on a couple of occasions that run-through block was on him on that last point. Down the line, nice cut from Millard. But the shots uh, down the line, the target uh, was Catherine Mobius. Too much pressure from Oxford. Uh, Jeremy Keown stalks towards the disc looks up not much movement doesn't need to be much or was that a touch or was that just a drop I, I feel like that was a D was it a D or did Holden just not connect with the disc was it fingertips I'd say Pollock got some cuticles on that one and into the end zone with a goal uh, for Glasgow sometimes you uh, got to take what you get and there again you just see that momentary flash of brilliance that was a great break a difficult throw to get off especially to hit your receiver in the chest the defensive structure seemed to momentarily now maybe it was just because they were lazy getting into position but it seemed to momentarily be a 1-3-3 zone that then allowed Pollock to sneak off and get that block on the uh, underpass it's just like you were saying earlier, they can get like five or six passes together, but they can't put it all together for long enough to go on the run. And this game just keeps sliding slowly out of view for them. 11-5, second point of the half. They've got a lot of work to do. And unless they can make a big step up right now, it just looks like Oxford are going to carry this one and they group quite comfortably into the knockout stages. Should we... Um talk a little bit about the rest of the tournament as this game looks like it's going to be uh, finished off uh, in Oxford's favour. We'll just make sure we understand and can give you all uh, the benefit of uh, a bit of extra information about uh, how the rest of the, the tournament's going to work out. If I can find that, it's on one of these tabs somewhere. So it's another zone look by Glasgow, and this one gets a turn, an overthrow out of the sideline. That was very, very nicely done by Glasgow. Initially looked almost slightly matchy, but then you could see them shift as a unit. A well-placed trap as Burns going to go pick up this disc. Can Glasgow make this interesting and get a break? That would be uh, exactly what they need. Only they started the half with the break. Running free and getting that grab. Burn. Gets the re reset around to La Critz. Floated forward. Is a good position in the end zone. And uh, Gregor Foster brings that disc down. Speculative shot to the end zone, Lorcan, but if you've got Forster in good position, he's got great height. Some conversation about the amount of contact those two players had 
as the disc was coming in. What's your view? I think he's he should go into a roofing business. That was spectacular. And I don't even see him jump. I think maybe like his feelings got injured for Oxford because that looked clean to me. And just one of those, yeah, okay, it's a speculative throw, but he just stood there, was bigger, took it down. You do own the space above your head, but if you can't jump up because somebody's already there and has caught the disc, then I, I kind of think you got to give it to him. The letter of the law says that if he couldn't get up and make a play. Well, he did get up. He did grab. I'm, is this a foul call from Oxford? It's, it's a foul call from Oxford on the grab, saying that uh, I think, for, anyway, this is my understanding that Forrester came in and fouled, going up there to get it. Wonder over and see if we can have a look at that replay. Well, yes, there's definitely uh, significant wavage. So that's going to be contested. That is going back. Thank you very much, Canada, for uh, using the hand signal so clearly. Really appreciate that. Nobody except me just saw on the sideline Lewis Grimmer nail a bottle flip. Back to the action. That's maybe the, the turn of fortune that Glasgow need. High grab required. Oh, sneaky hand block attempt. Connie Hodge is, is part of this Glasgow um, handling line, but she's just been marked out of the game. And when she has been available, like she was there, the Glasgow team have looked her off. Here she comes again now. So there's a chance to take it. She's not really busting free into that cut space. And maybe uh, Shona Carr is the, the defensive player. Maybe that's too much of a threat. But at the moment, if Glasgow, Glasgow are calling a woman as part of the line and then not passing to her, it's just making Oxford's job a bit too easy. And I wonder, is that the intimidation? Because we've saw Car, seen Carr get so many blocks so far in this game and like a coiled spring just launching from an almost static position at times to steal in and get them. But you have to force that throw. And if you're not able to get it to the receiver who's there, to the handler who's there, they have to clear out because there's a whole other width of the pitch that... Glasgow haven't been able to take use of, and that's why they wind up getting these turns, forcing it down the sideline. I think that you can try, you can try and intimidate a team, but if you're the team that's being intimidated, then that's on you, isn't it? I think that was a great grab there from Canada, rising up. How'd you go? Lefty flip to Matsumaya, who grabs. Finds Canada. Car is available in the deep space. Floats it back across to Matsumaya. Forward now to how do you go? Too easy for Oxford here. They've got the options they want at every opportunity. And the two handlers just running it into the end zone. Canada. Oh, very disheartening to watch Glasgow just crumble away here. Not doing what they need to do on offense and on defense. They like us two or three steps behind every cut and uh, completely out of this one. It's a 12 6 score line to Oxford. And look, and you were talking to both teams beforehand. Is, is this the, the score line that you were expecting from those conversations? Not at all. I certainly thought the game would be a lot closer. Honestly, I thought Glasgow would have a chance to edge it. Like, like we mentioned earlier, they lost that game to go last year. They didn't have as much time to practice. They've been building up, yes, and a lot to a large extent from the ground this season, but surprised to come second at, na at regionals, which is a big achievement. They're coming out of the north. There's a lot of quality teams up there. And to get this outclassed in the group stages is a big surprise. They've still got plenty they can take from this game. I mean, they're here to test their character. They're here to prove their positivity and carry them through these moments. And this is part of a longer campaign that has years of ambition ahead of it, not just in building the Glasgow Mixed Ultimate, but also from talking to the captains, they don't, all, the, all those players going to other elements of Scottish Ultimate and helping lift the community in general, whether they want to play mixed, whether they want to play open women's. 
whatever the case may be. So there's a lot ahead of this group. So right now, I still think it's a great opportunity for them to test their positivity, test their resolve, no, by no means give up, but I didn't think they'd be in this position at all. I thought it would be much, much tighter. Maybe Oxford, by saying, yeah, we're really boring, were kind of underselling themselves to me because I didn't see the kind of defensive pressure they've been able to exert coming at all. They've been very good. Nemesis, the other uh, team in this pool with these two. Nice forward pass uh, from Dimitrova. Down the line. Oh, the execution on that backhand. We've been talking about it most of the game. Raturi with the third assist of the game, and he pounded it down the sideline. Great grab in the end zone from Rachel Pollock. A little bit of class from Glasgow. It is there. Every now and again, it comes to the fore, and that's exactly what I'm talking about when you're saying this is a year's ahead of this whole unit. There's years ahead of their ambitions so they can keep building and take those moments and try to be able to bring them to bear a bit more consistently. We've seen some really impressive performances by Glasgow mixed sides in the past. And it's never an easy thing to rebuild a club and to try and get a new generation in, even when they do have the mix of experience that Glasgow can bring to bear. But maybe that's the nature of it. There's a lot about what they do is very mixed. Their performance today has been mixed. Their levels of experience, mixed. The levels of uh, familiarity with each other, mixed. Two first-year captains, so much to build on and turning those flashes into more consistent burns. On the opposite side of it, Oxford have taken these blows and have always responded very professionally so far in this game. They can take the shots, they understand that simple concept, the good teams score, and they will score. And they do not look nearly as subject to the emotional to and fro that comes from sport and can dictate where you're playing. So will that be a big boon for Glasgow? Yes, but another confident offensive hole could see them quietened just as quickly. Five points, the margin. Mm. Did get up to six points for a while. Oxford. Nice forward pass, creating the space with an intelligent cut away from Forster. Works it down the line to Holden. And again, it's just that calm, flowing offense. Take the open side unders when they're available. Work hard and clear space for other people when you move. Long conversation from Holden here. Tap back in. Nice forward uh, movement from How'd You Go. Up he the line. So Chung. How'd You Go front corner. Oh, so effective. Quick, got great hands, played a really uh, dominant part in the Oxford team's success here and gets the score at the end of uh, another hold for Oxford. How'd you go has been incredible all game long. Such a central role to everything that Oxford have been doing offensively. Where they have some other players who really step up to the fore, getting those poach blocks. How'd you go? Just seems to have this inherent ability to take over offensive possessions, hit the disc, up rushing hander. How many times have you seen him get the dump? As they seem to be confused and think the game is to 13. Um, oh, maybe we missed a, a hooter. Maybe the game is to 13. But that appears from everything we know here. They did take a cap at eight, didn't they? So we were all assuming. Right, that that might that might explain a few things. Yes. So well, it's a, it's game to Oxford. It always looked like it was going to be game to Oxford, and these two teams will uh, head off into the rest of their tournament. Uh, we've got more action coming up for you uh, here on Ulti TV with Chevron Action Flash. Uh, against Smash D, Benji Reese and Lorcan Murray back with you for that one. And later on today in the women's division, Spice and LMU, the top British team from the World Championship, Spice, 
playing a top British team from the World Masters Championships in LMU. That's going to be an exciting game. We've got a open crossover later on at 3 o'clock and Bristol versus Scram uh, at 5 p.m. So do stay tuned um, all day. Uh, myself, Tom Styles, alongside Lorcan Murray for this one. And Lorcan, ultimately, it was a, a game that Oxford just put the pressure on Glasgow and they couldn't respond. It's exactly what happened. They used that education that they've been developing for so long and brought it fully to bear. The right strategy, the right perspective, and in the end, the right teams goes forward. Lots to be positive about in flashes for Glasgow and a bright future ahead for them and Scottish Ultimate in general as that community continues to raise up. But for Oxford, an impressive turnout and maybe a little bit of a threat to the big three that we've kind of just been presuming are going to be making up the final. Plenty to play for as Oxford will take on Nemesis and then presumably top their group. So a team to keep an eye on as we move forward. Our pleasure to have you alongside me, Lorcan, as always. And uh, do stay tuned here from Nottingham as the UK National Championship continues. Alti.tv.